Have you ever been playing Tetris and you get a miss drop out of nowhere or something else weird happens that you know you didn't mean to do while you're playing the Switch? Well, that's because the Switch Pro Controller has a crappy D-pad. That's right, it sucks. But we're gonna make it better. The reason the D-pad gives so many missed inputs is because the contacts on the actual board itself are too sensitive. This results in a random input being registered even when that's not what you meant to press. For example, if you're going between left and right really quickly, you'll see a random up or down input thrown in there, and that's not what we want. So to fix this problem, we need to actually put some tape over the contacts to make them less sensitive. And in order to do that, we need to open this thing up. Now, if you're like me, I know what you're thinking. What if I break something? I've never opened a controller before, oh no. Don't worry, if I can do this, you can too. First, we need to take off both handles, each held in by a single screw. We're gonna be unscrewing a lot of different shapes and sizes of screws, so make sure to keep them organized somehow so you don't get them mixed up with each other. Take those off, slide the handles out, and then you'll see four more silver screws that we'll also need to remove. Once the second set of screws are removed, we can take off the back plate. This reveals the battery, which we can also remove. And underneath that is a third set of five screws. Don't forget the two on the top, they're kind of hard to see. Once those are out, we can finally pry this thing apart. And honestly, this is the trickiest part of the whole thing. The two halves are stuck together with really strong tape and you really need to put some force into it to pull this apart, but also not too much, because you'll notice once you finally do get it apart, the two halves are still connected by a ribbon cable. And you have to be careful not to yank that out accidentally. We have to disconnect the ribbon cable properly. Use a razor blade or some sort of cutting tool to get underneath the flap, flip the flap up, and then pull it out. Note that we're pulling it out of the front side of the controller, not the back. Now we can set the whole back half of the controller aside and just work on the front. There's a final set of four screws here on the front board that we need to remove. There's also a second, smaller ribbon cable that we need to unlatch here. Be very careful with this one as it's really tiny and kind of fragile. Now we can carefully remove the front PCB, which is the piece we've been trying to get to this whole time. Flip it over and you'll see the four contacts for the D-pad that we've been looking for. Also, while taking this board apart, you may have had a few of the buttons fall out of place on accident, but it's not a big deal because you can slot them right back in and each button is conveniently shaped a little differently so you can't actually put a button in a wrong place accidentally. They all have their unique shape, which I think is kind of cool. Just make sure you put the pads back on the right way and that they're not upside down. Now again, the reason we get so many missed inputs is because these contacts go a little bit lower than they need to. So sometimes the very inside edge of a contact will register when going from one direction to another. So what we're going to do is take some tape. I used Kapton tape when shooting this, but I found out later that clear scotch tape actually works way better. So I'd recommend using that. And we're just gonna take a tiny little piece of it and tape it over the inside edge of each contact. You can go ahead and tape it about halfway up each contact. When filming this, I went about a third of the way up and I found it wasn't quite enough. Just don't go too far though, because then you won't be able to register any input at all. Again, what we're doing is just blocking any signal from the inside edge so that it doesn't accidentally give us any inputs that we don't want. Now that we put the tape on, all we need to do is put everything back together. And that pretty much just involves doing everything you did to take it apart in reverse. You can rewind or pause this video if you need help for reference, and hopefully if you kept track of your screws, it'll be pretty easy to know which ones go where. The only real tricky part about putting this back together is making sure the ribbon cables go back into place nicely. They're a little finicky and kind of hard to move, so just be gentle and try to guide it in with your thumb if you can. Take your time with it, and then just push the flap down to lock it back in place. The larger one is pretty tricky because of the way it curves, but you can get it in there with some patience. I tried to get a shot of it, but the angle was kind of tricky here. Just make sure you push the flap down to lock it into place, just like you did with the smaller one.
And there you have it, a fixed D-pad. Here's an example of some left-right inputs on a modified controller using this method. And for contrast, here's an example of an unmodified D-pad. I was actually playing some Puyo Tetris with some friends and gave one of them a standard controller and the other the modified one and then had them swap controllers and whoever had the good controller actually won each game. If you've never modified a controller before, this is a great place to start. It's a pretty simple mod and it may seem daunting if you've never done it before, but hey, if I can do it, you can too. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, drop a like, subscribe, or leave a comment. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.